Hello everyone. Today we're going to be reading a chapter book for those of you who um, really like a bit of a longer story that you can listen to maybe over the period of a few days instead of all at once. And uh, a lot of you at school have mentioned that you've been missing seeing my dog in the video. So this is Annie and I had to come to her because she sleeps all day like a cat. So this is where I'm going to read you the story from here. Um, and she can hang out with me. So this is uh, another Hildy book. And I don't know about you, but I love the Hildy books. They are mysteries. And I read one of them to you last year. So this one is called Hildy Cracks a Case UFO Spotted by Hildy Lisiak with Matthew Lisiak, illustrated by Joan Lou Vrithoff. Introduction. Hi, my name is Hildy. It rhymes with Bildy. I may be only nine years old, but I'm a serious reporter. I learned all about newspapers from my dad. He used to be a reporter in New York City. I loved going with him to the scene of the crime. Each story was a puzzle. To put the pieces together, we had to answer six questions. Who, what, when, where, why, how. Then we'd solve the mystery. I knew right away I wanted to be a reporter. But I also knew that no big paper was going to hire a kid. Did I let that stop me? Not a chance. That's why I created a paper for my hometown, the Orange Street News. Now all I needed were stories that would make people want to read my paper. I wasn't going to find those sitting at home. Being a reporter means going out and hunting down the news. And there's no telling where a story will take me. So in this picture, it shows the town where she lives, which is called Selins Grove. And there is a little cartoon picture of Hildy. On the back of the book is the real Hildy. A reporter's toolbox. So here's some vocabulary that you're going to hear in this story that's important to know. Confirm. To make sure the information is correct. A deadline. The time or date a story is due. Exclusive. A story only one reporter is covering. Gumshoe. A person whose job is to find information about someone or something. So a detective. Another word for detective would be gumshoe. Investigate. To dig deeper into a story. Notepad. Where a reporter keeps clues, quotes, and important notes. Pulitzer Prize. The top award for reporting. Source. A person who gives information to a reporter. Subscriber. A person who has signed up to receive a newspaper. Witness. A person who sees something happen. Okay, so now you have some good vocabulary words there. Now we're going to start with chapter one. A mysterious streak of light. A bright flash of light streaked across the cloudy sky. My older sister, Izzy, quickly raised her camera. Click, click. What was that, I asked. Izzy looked at her camera screen. I don't know, she said. It moved so fast I didn't get a picture. Do you think it was an airplane? I shook my head. Not any kind of airplane I've ever seen. I'd say it was an unidentified flying object. A UFO? You think aliens have landed in Selins Grove, asked Izzy? Who said anything about aliens? A UFO is just something people see in the sky but do not know what it is, I explained. Whatever it was, it had us both on edge. Last week we saw a movie at the Grove Cinema. It was called Spaceship Invaders. In it, little green men from outer space had landed in a small town. They pretended to be regular people so they could take over the world. It was kind of scary. So there they are watching this scary alien movie. Izzy nudged me. Come on, it looks like it might storm. Let's try to find witnesses before it rains. Maybe someone got a better look at the thing. She was right. I needed answers if I wanted to have a story fit for the Orange Street News. Who, what, when, where, why, how. Those are the questions that need to be answered. 
I jotted down a few notes in my notepad. What? A mysterious flash of light in the sky. When? 3.40 p.m. And as we go, you guys can follow along and take your own notes in that style if you want. Every time you get clues, every time you, I read something that rings a bell to you that it might be a clue, you can be jotting things down too, just like Hildy. Hildy, look who's coming, exclaimed Izzy. The Meanagers. Donnie, Leon, and Maddie were walking towards us. The Meanagers are a group of Orange Street teenagers known for their rotten attitudes. There they are. Ooh. Izzy and I stood up. What do, what do you guys want? asked Izzy. You two babies don't have a clue, do you? said Maddie. A clue about what? I asked. Did you see that strange light in the sky too? added Izzy. Donnie crossed his arms. Yep, we saw it and we know what it was, he said. But she won't believe us. Try us, said Hildy. The truth might be too scary for you, added Leon. Chapter 2. Alien Invasion. So as you go, if you decide to stop at a certain chapter and listen another day, make sure you're looking at what time you finish or maybe jot it down in your notes what time you finished so that you can keep track of the chapters. I knew it was unlikely that the Meanagers would help us, but a reporter knows that even a bad source sometimes gives good information. Tell us what you know, I said. Not so fast, said Maddie, looking right at me. First you need to promise not to pee your baby diaper. Izzy rolled her eyes. Come on, Hildy, she said. This is a waste of time. Besides, we don't have all day. We have Pop-Pop's surprise birthday dinner tonight, remember? Izzy and I needed to get to Benny's Pizzeria by 5.15 p.m. for the party, and my news story had to be posted online by 6 p.m., the usual deadline. Fortunately, it was only 3.45. We have plenty of time, I told Izzy. Maddie stepped closer to me. Well, do you promise? This was going to be humiliating, but I needed to get to the bottom of this story. I swallowed. Yes, I promise not to pee my baby diaper, I said softly. The Meanagers exploded into laughter. Now spill it, I said. The Meanagers were quiet. Well, I said. Finally, Donnie began talking. The streak of light, it was a spaceship from outer space. I rolled my eyes. Aliens from outer space aren't real, I said. Let's go, Hildy, Izzy said. They're messing with us. No, it's true, replied Maddie. And that was not the first spaceship we saw. Earlier today, we saw one flying above Grove Pond. Grove Pond was a small, muddy pond at the bottom of Selen's Grove Forest. What? UFO flying above Grove Pond. So she made another note in her book. Selen's Grove really is being invaded, said Leon. A reporter knows that sometimes the truth can be super weird. However, a good reporter knows that you need to stick to the facts. How do you know the bright lights were spaceships, I asked. The proof is in the field behind the pond, Maddie said. What kind of proof, I asked. That's where one of the spaceships crashed, said Donnie. Did you see the wreckage, I asked. And risk getting attacked by aliens? Not a chance, said Leon. Donnie punched his friend's shoulder. Izzy pulled me aside. This is obviously a prank, she whispered. Maybe, I answered, but it's the only lead we have. I turned to the meanagers. Thanks for the tip. We'll check it out. Izzy and I hopped on our bikes. One more thing I called out as we pedaled away. I'm not a baby, but maybe we can find you some diapers on our way back. Good one, said Izzy. Aliens in Selen's Grove? I knew it was unlikely. But if it was true, it wouldn't just be big news for Selen's Grove. It would be big news for the whole world. Chapter 3, Storm Clouds. So again, if you're stopping here, make sure you look at the time on the video so you can come back to the same place. Izzy and I sped down Pine Street. 
The clouds ahead had turned the purple of a bruise. It looked like a big storm was coming. What do you think we'll find at Grove Pond? I asked. Izzy shrugged. Maybe nothing. What do you think? Well, I don't think we're going to find little green men, I said. But I hope we'll find a clue about the UFOs. We turned right and headed down a bumpy gravel path along the river. Izzy and I leaned our bikes up against the sign for Grove Pond. Maddie said the UFO crashed in the field behind the pond, I said. Let's check it out. Izzy and I began walking around the pond. I don't see anything here except some chickens, Izzy said. Maybe the UFO crashed at the bottom of this hill, I suggested. We began hiking down a small, wooded hill. If aliens were coming to Earth, why would they want to land here in Selins Grove, Izzy asked. Maybe they heard about the crispy bacon at the Kind Cat Cafe, I joked. We both laughed. Then my stomach growled. That made me think about tonight's dinner. I couldn't wait to surprise Pop-Pop and to fill my belly with pizza. I was about to check the time when Izzy grabbed my arm. What's that? She, sa she asked, pointing downhill. I couldn't believe my eyes. Is that, I said? It can't be, said Izzy. Chapter 4, The Spaceship. So if you're stopping here, look at the time on the video and write it down. Izzy and I stood like statues. There were strange pieces of metal scattered all over the hillside. This must be where the spaceship crashed, said Izzy. The pieces were the size of bent cookie sheets and looked just as hard and shiny. I walked over to the wreckage. Well, something definitely crashed here, but I don't see anything that proves it came from outer space. Izzy began taking pictures. Click, click. I took some notes. What? Strange pieces of metal. Where? The hillside behind Grove Pond. I bent down to touch a piece of metal, but Izzy smacked my arm. What are you doing? She shouted. I think it would be a good idea to bring a piece home to investigate, I said. Are you out of your mind? Remember that Space Invaders movie, Izzy said? If this wreckage is from a different planet, it could carry an alien disease. I hadn't thought about that. I replied, just to be safe. I guess we can take a closer look at your pictures later. Good plan, Izzy said. I looked at my notepad. So the only fact we have is that there was a bright flash in the sky, I said. Maybe two flashes, if we believe the meanagers. Their story seems true now that we found the crash, crash site, added Izzy. Right, I said. But we need a lot more information if you're, we're going to uncover where this wreckage came from. And if these pieces of metal really are from a spaceship, then we could be working on a Pulitzer Prize winning story. That's great, said Izzy. Now we can get out. Now can we get out of here? Just then we heard footsteps. We jumped behind the closest tree to hide. It's the aliens, Izzy cried. Chapter 5 The Green Hand. Izzy and I crouched behind the tree trunk. We stayed perfectly still so that whoever or whatever was coming wouldn't know we were there. The aliens have come to get their spaceship, Izzy whispered. The footsteps kept coming. They were getting closer when suddenly they stopped. Can you take a peek with your camera, I whispered. No way, she said. I don't want whatever it is out there to see me. I rolled my eyes. Some big sister you are, Izzy shrugged. Even though I didn't want to admit it, I felt scared too. But was I really going to let my fear get in the way of reporting the news? We're being silly, I said. Hildy, remember, Izzy whispered, reporters should not become part of the story. And if you get zapped up in an alien spaceship, then that's exactly what will happen. Except no one will be here to write it. Zapped up in a spaceship? No, this was getting ridiculous. Don't be such a scaredy cat, I said. Standing up, there's no such thing as aliens. My heart was pounding. I took a deep breath, and I peeked around the tree. 
No one was there. See, Izzy, I told you there was nothing to be, I started to say. But then my jaw dropped. I could see part of someone or something picking up a piece of metal on the hillside. I ducked back behind the tree. What is it, Hildy? What did you see? Asked Izzy. I, I, I saw a hand, I stammered. Why are you afraid of a hand, she asked. I tried to talk, but it felt like my mouth was full of marbles. The hand, it was green. Chapter 6, Don't Look Back. If you're stopping here, make sure you take note of the time on the video. You saw a green hand, Izzy repeated. Her eyes were the size of silver dollar pancakes. Yes, I said, my voice shaking. Hildy, aliens are green, Izzy said. Let's make a run for it. Izzy and I ran back up the hill as fast as we could. I can see our bikes, I yelled. As we sprinted around the pond, I risked a quick glance behind us. No one's chasing us, I said, slowing down. I had never run so fast in my life. I stopped to catch my breath, but of the corner of my eye, I saw Izzy looking back behind us. What's wrong, I asked. My camera, she said. I left it behind the tree. Izzy had saved her allowance for two years to buy her camera. We have to go back, I said. I know how much you love that camera. Besides, I'd rather deal with aliens than with Dad after he finds out you lost it. Izzy shook her head. We can't go back, Hildy. We can't leave it there. We need those photos, I argued. Izzy sighed. What if we come back for it in a little bit, you know, after the alien is gone? I checked my phone. It was already 4.30 p.m. Okay, I replied, but a green hand isn't proof of aliens. Where should we go next, Izzy asked. We need to find more facts, I said. I had an idea. A reporter knows that speaking to an expert can be a great way to move a story forward. So we just needed to find an expert. Can you think of anyone in Sellingsgrove who would know a lot about aliens and spaceships, I asked. Maybe Walter, Izzy suggested. He knows a lot about everything. Walter could sometimes be cranky, but he read a lot of books. He even owned a bookstore. Great idea, I said. Maybe you can help us understand what these UFOs really are. Izzy and I pedaled up Pine Street. We were about to turn right on Market Street when we ran into our friends, Maya and Lexi. They went to Selins Grove Middle School. Izzy and I hopped off our bikes. Hey there, I said. Maya and Lexi didn't answer. They looked us up and down. Is something wrong? asked Izzy. Maya and Lexi were usually giggly, but not now. They looked serious. Why aren't you two saying anything? I asked. Finally, Maya spoke. Are you both human? Chapter 7. Aliens Among Us. If you're stopping here, take note of the time. On the video. <laughs> uh, Izzy and I stared at Maya and Lexi. Are we both human, I asked. What kind of question is that? Izzy stepped closer to the girls. I am a human, but I've always wondered what planet Hildy came from, she joked. The planet Awesome, I shot back. Lexi laughed. Then she turned to Maya. It's okay, it's really Izzy and Hildy. Who else would we be, I asked. Maya raised her eyebrows. Haven't you heard? Aliens are taking over Earth, and they're starting with Selen's Grove. Aliens are pretending to be people, added Lexi. I knew a reporter needed to keep an open mind, but an alien invasion still seemed really far-fetched. What makes you think aliens are taking over people, I asked as I took out my notepad. Well, said Maya, we ran into Mrs. Hooper, who said she overheard Mayor Jeff talking to... I interrupted her. I need facts, not rumors. Did you two see any aliens? Well, no, said Lexi, but everyone has been acting weird ever since that bright light flashed across the sky earlier today. How are people acting weird, I asked. Glenn at the Kind Cat Cafe couldn't remember my name today, answered Lexi. And I saw Officer D chasing Professor Henry, added Maya. They were both staring at the sky. I thought they were going to bang into each other.
Professor Henry taught at Sellins Grove University, and he was a subscriber to the Orange Street News. I knew from delivering his paper that he lived on 8th Street. Has anyone you've talked to actually seen aliens, I asked. Maya and Lexi looked at each other. I guess not, said Lexi. I looked down at my notepad. It was full of wild theories, but thin on facts. Not good. Izzy and I needed to get moving. Thanks for the tips, I said. I turned to Izzy as we walked away. She was biting her lip. Don't tell me you believe people are being taken over by aliens, I said. I'm not sure what to think, she said. How do you explain the mysterious light in the sky? Or the strange pieces of metal? Or the green hand? I mean, you always say sometimes the truth is super weird. Sure, but weird is one thing, and unbelievable is another. I also always say that the first thing a reporter needs to do is get all the facts, I said. Let's go talk to Walter. Maybe he'll have some answers for us. We biked down Market Street and pulled up to Walter's books. Chapter 8, The Smartest Person in Town. If you're starting here, if you're stopping here, make sure you take note of the time in the video. So you can come back to the same place. A bell above the door clanged as we walked inside the bookstore. Walter was sitting behind the counter. In one hand, he held a book. In the other, a steaming mug. Hildy, he looks like he doesn't want to be bothered, as he whispered. He always looks like that, I answered, but we have a deadline to meet. I stepped up to the counter. Hi, Walter, I said. He kept reading. Hi, Walter, I said again louder. Walter lowered his book and glared at us. I'm not hard of hearing. I heard you the first time. What can I help you with? We're sorry to bother you, Izzy said. I was wondering if I could ask you a few questions, I said. Hmm, he said. Is that for that paper of yours? I stood up straighter. As a matter of fact, it is for the Orange Street News, I said. We're working on a story about UFOs. We were hoping you could tell us if aliens are real. Walter put down his book. Aliens, he repeated. He rubbed his beard. Now why do you think I would know anything about aliens? Because everyone says you're the smartest person in town, answered Izzy. That may be true, Walter said. But I am the smartest person because... I know what I don't know, and I certainly know not to discuss things I don't know. His words confused me. I tried again. So do you know if aliens are real? Walter leaned forward. Do you girls know how big the universe is? We shook our heads. The universe is bigger than you could ever imagine, he said. So anyone who is sure our planet is the only one that life has on it, well, no one will be calling that person the smartest person in Selen's Grove, I can tell you that. That makes it sound like you do believe in aliens, said Izzy. I believe that in a universe as big as ours, it is unlikely that we are alone, he answered. My phone vibrated, but it's rude to look at your phone during an interview, so I ignored it. Then I heard Izzy's phone vibrate too. She glanced at the text. Dad wants us home right away, Izzy said. Sorry, Walter, I said, but we've got to go. Walter picked up his book. I checked my phone as we rushed out. It was only five, so it wasn't time for Pop-Pop's party yet. Izzy and I jumped on our bikes. I wonder what could be wrong, I asked. I don't know, but Dad's text was in all caps, so we'd better hurry, said Izzy. All in capital letters. And it said, come home right away. Chapter 9. Deep Trouble. If you're going to stop here for the day, make sure you take note of the time on the video. Dad was standing in the doorway. He looked angry, and he was holding Izzy's camera. My camera, Izzy exclaimed. Um, hi, Dad, I said cheerfully. Do you girls have something you want to tell me, he asked, like what this very expensive camera was doing behind Grove Pond? Izzy stammered. We, we were investigating a story, and I accidentally left it there. Well, you're lucky Professor Henry found it. It's a good thing you wrote your name on the camera strap, Dad said. But you need to take better care of your things. I'm sorry, said Izzy. We sat down on the couch. Dad handed her the camera. 
Let me guess, he said. You're investigating the mysterious lights in the sky. I quickly pulled out my notepad. Yes, what have you heard? He smiled. Sorry, no facts, only rumors. I frowned. Dad ruffled my hair. Oh, there's been a slight change of plans for Pop Pop's party. We've moved dinner time from 5.15 to 6. I checked the time. It was 5.10 p.m. So we have 50 minutes before we have to be at Benny's, I asked. Yes, Dad said. You can go back to investigating. Just don't be late. We'll be there on time, I promised, as Dad headed upstairs. We can't wait to surprise Pop Pop and give him the special gift we made. Izzy turned to me. Let's take a closer look at all those metal pieces now that I have my camera back. That's a great idea, I said. Izzy pulled the pictures up right away. Look, I said, pointing. There are some sort of markings stamped on that piece. Izzy zoomed in. Do you think those numbers and letters could be a secret alien code, Izzy asked? I doubt it, but they're definitely a clue, so I'll write them down, I said. And I think now is a great time to review our notes. I opened my notepad. So here's a list of all the notes that they've taken since this whole thing began. What? A mysterious light streaked across the sky. It was a UFO. Meanagers saw a second UFO. Meanagers heard a crash. Pieces of metal were found at the crash site. This long number letter combination was stamped on one of the metal pieces. What does this mean? What are these UFOs really? Where? The sky over Selens Grove, the hillside behind Grove Pond. If aliens really did land here, then where are they now? Who? Aliens? Question mark? I saw a green hand. Whose hand was it? Who else could be flying these UFOs? How? How are these UFOs flying? Using top secret alien technology? Something else? Walter believes aliens could be real. Why? Why did aliens crash here? Did aliens crash here by accident on their way to somewhere else? Do aliens want to take over people like Maya and Lexi said? Or is there a reason for the UFOs being here that is not connected to aliens? Oh, I said, we aren't even close to having a story. We need facts. There must be someone who knows what's going on. What about Professor Henry? He must have been on the hillside this afternoon if he found my camera, Izzy said. And didn't Lexi say she saw him staring at the sky earlier? You're right. He could be a witness, I said. Or he could be an alien, answered Izzy. I wouldn't go that far, I said. But I do have a feeling Professor Henry may be right in the middle of the mystery. Let's go see him. We should have just enough time, Izzy agreed, but then we need to head back to Benny's. Izzy put Pop Pop's gift in her backpack. We ran outside, hopped back onto our bikes, and headed down Orange Street. Chapter 10, Knock Knock. If you're going to stop here, take note of the time on the video and come back to it next time. We pedaled to Professor Henry's house. It sure got dark quickly, Izzy said. It looks like it might storm soon, I said. After two short blocks, we skidded to a stop. This is the house, I said. The lights are off, Izzy said, frowning. We knocked on the door. No one answered. I guess he isn't home, I said. Izzy started to head back to our bikes. She stopped. Hey, the garage light is on, she said. Maybe he's in there. We followed the path to the garage and knocked on the door. Professor Henry, Izzy called out, are you in there? Again, no one answered. I stood up on my tippy toes to peek in the window. I gasped. Izzy, I cried. Look what's in the corner of his garage. Shiny bent pieces of metal were piled high in Professor Henry's garage. Those look like the same pieces of metal we saw at the UFO crash site, said Izzy. My hand was shaking as I jotted down some notes. This was a big clue. Izzy took a picture. 
I told you Professor Henry was an alien, she said. Well, or could he be working for the aliens? I don't know what to think, I said, but I need to get a closer look. We need to make sure those pieces have the same markings on them as the pieces from the wreckage. Can you zoom in on one? Izzy looked at her camera screen. We held our breath as she zoomed in. The tiny letters and numbers were exactly the same. Chapter 11, Bike versus Car. Okay, so if you're stopping here, take note of the time on the video so you can come back to the same place. We knew that Professor Henry had been at the UFO crash site, and now we knew pieces of metal from the site were in his garage. He was definitely involved, but how? Without interviewing Professor Henry, we don't have enough facts for a story, I said. What do you mean, asked Izzy. Obviously, he's helping the aliens rebuild their spaceship. I can't write a story without all the facts, I argued. We still don't know what that, wreck that that wreckage came from an alien spaceship. But this story is huge, Izzy cried. You need to post it now. We're about to miss our deadline. I checked the time. We've already missed it, I said, frowning, but a reporter knows it's more important to be right than to be first. We can't rush this story. Izzy crossed her arms. I knew she was upset, but then her jaw dropped. Hildy, it's after 6 p.m., she cried. Oh no, we're late for Pop-Pop's party, I said. Just then we saw Dad's car whiz by. Pop-Pop was in the passenger seat. It's 6.02. I smiled at Izzy. Good thing Pop-Pop's always late, too. As we hopped on our bikes, Izzy called out, Yeah, but we still need to beat them to the restaurant. I know a shortcut. Follow me. Izzy hopped the curb, crossed the orange, crossed orange Street, and then cut through Rotary Park. My sister was always fast on a bike, but I had never seen her pedal this fast. It was hard to keep up. Benny's straight ahead, I shouted. Benny's is straight ahead, I shouted. We both looked both ways. Dad's car was stopped at the red light. Hurry, said Izzy. Somehow we crossed Market Street without being spotted. We did it, I cheered. Izzy smiled. We were running our bike we were running our bikes to the back of the restaurant when we heard a familiar voice. Hey, I looked up. It was Mom. She was ducking down behind a chair. The patio was decorated. My little sister, Georgie, and Juliet were there. Even my Mimi, Mimi was crouching down behind some balloons. You girls are just in time, said Mom. Izzy and I crouched down beside her. Soon the patio door opened. We all jumped out of our hiding spots. Surprise, we yelled. Chapter 12, UFO Chase. If you're stopping here for the day, take note of the time on the video so you can come back. Pop Pop jumped. Then he let out a big laugh. Is this all this for me, he said. Happy birthday, we shouted. Two waiters came out. They each set down a large pizza. We dug right in was about to grab a second slice when a flash of light streaked across the sky. Another UFO, I cried. It's flying behind Grove Pond again, said Izzy. Oh my, said Mom. That is unbelievable, Dad said. Pop-Pop stepped over to Izzy and me. I ran into Mr. Troutman at the grocery store and he said people have been acting funny since those strange lights appeared, said Pop-Pop. Oh, that Mr. Troutman is just a gossip, answered Mimi. Well, I think not being able to explain these strange lights has caused a lot of people to act weird, I said. These girls need to find the facts, Pop-Pop agreed. It's time for us to crack this case wide open, I said. Izzy and I looked at Mom and Dad. Don't even think about it, Dad said sternly. You aren't leaving, Mom added. Not on your grandfather's birthday. Pop-Pop looked at us and smiled. He turned to Mom and Dad. I suppose because it's my birthday. I can get what I want, right? He said. Of course, Dad answered. Well, my birthday wish is that these two gumshoes get to the bottom of this story. 
Pop Pop said, I can't wait to read a fact-based front page story that involves the Selins Grove UFO mystery. I grabbed my tote bag. Izzy grabbed her camera and her backpack. We looked at Dad. He shrugged and smiled. Thanks, Pop Pop, we said, giving him a quick hug. Then Izzy and I biked down Pine Street like we had been shot out of cannons. I looked up. The UFO was moving in a zigzag motion towards Grove Pond. Hurry, I yelled. My eyes were glued to the dancing yellow lights in the sky. We have to get there while the UFO is still up in the sky. Izzy and I turned onto the gravel path. It was dark. I squinted to see where I was going. Pedal faster, Izzy shouted. I looked up again. The light was becoming clearer now. It wasn't just one light. It was several lights, and they were spinning. I strained my eyes upwards, trying to see more, but my gaze was broken by Izzy screaming, Hildy, look out! I jolted my eyes back down to look at the path. I was headed right for the pond. I slammed on my brakes, but it was too late. Splash. Yuck, I screamed. Grove Pond wasn't very deep, but when I tried to climb out, my feet wouldn't move. They were stuck in the muddy bottom. Quick, Izzy, I said, give me a hand. Izzy dropped her bike and grabbed a large stick. She stretched it towards me. Grab on, she said. I reached for the stick. I can't get it, I yelled. Suddenly, the UFO stopped zigzagging. It hovered in midair right above us. We were standing in a bright circle of light. We found the UFO, I said. Or the UFO found us, Izzy shouted. I've seen enough movies to know this is it. The aliens are going to take us into their spaceship. Chapter 13, Lights from Above. I tried to look up, but the lights were blinding. Hold out the stick, Izzy, I shouted. Hurry. Izzy scooted closer to me. I used all my strength, stretching my arm as far as it would go. Finally, I grabbed the stick. Izzy pulled me out of the swampy pond, and I scrambled onto dry ground. The UFO was hovering above us. It was making a loud, buzzing noise. I pulled out my notepad. Izzy grabbed her camera. She aimed it at the UFO. Click, click. Then the UFO started flying down closer and closer. I was seeing spots from staring up at the light. Ah! I screamed as something sharp scratched my foot. I looked down. Within the circle of light, I could see a strange claw reaching towards me, trying to grab my foot. I jumped, I jumped to get away from the claw. Then I blinked and looked back down at the ground. We were surrounded by chickens. They were scampering in all directions. The lights must be scaring them too, said Izzy. Buzz. The UFO sound got closer as the craft got closer to the ground. Then we saw a shadow. This time it wasn't chickens. It wasn't even the UFO. Izzy grabbed onto me. A figure stepped into the light. Full Chapter 14. Full of hot air. The body standing before us was green, but we couldn't see its head. It was still outside the circle of light. Are you girls okay? A voice asked. The alien speaks our language, said Izzy. Wait, I know that voice, I said. Step into the light. The figure wasn't an alien. It was Professor Henry. He was wearing a green suit and holding a large remote control. Professor Henry pressed some buttons on the remote. The UFO came down and thud. It landed beside us. The lights turned off. Izzy and I stared at the object. It looked a lot smaller on the ground than it did in the sky. Do you like my drone? Professor Henry said, smiling. Your what? Is he asked. My drone. It's like a small remote controlled airplane, he explained. Why are you flying a drone? I asked. I'm doing a study on the environment for Selins Grove University, he explained. This is a weather balloon drone. It collects information like temperatures and the amount of water in the air. Hopefully the data this drone collects will help people better predict when the next big storm might come. And since it looked like it might storm today, I wanted to collect as much information as I could. 
wrote down, I wrote everything down. I had some great quotes. That all makes sense, I said. Yeah, Izzy agreed. But why are you dressed like that? Well, whenever I'm working on a scientific study, I like to make sure I'm fully covered. This way, if I have to dig around in a muddy pond like this one, maybe to search for a drone that crashed, I can stay safe and clean. I'm also often working outside in stormy weather, so this suit keeps me dry. Oh, I said. Then Izzy and I started laughing. We couldn't stop. What's so funny, asked Professor Henry. A lot of people saw the lights in the sky and thought I began. And when Hildy saw your green hand, Izzy added, everyone thought my drone was an alien spaceship, he said. Professor Henry started laughing too. Oh, geez, I heard people talking about aliens, but I had no idea they were talking about my drones. I guess Officer D didn't tell anyone, anyone what I was doing. Don't worry, I said. That's what the Orange Street News is for. We'll let people know the truth. Izzy took pictures of the drone. I stepped in for a closer look. This drone had a new set of numbers on it. What's this code for? I asked Professor Henry. That's a serial number, he replied. Each drone has its own markings. That way I can keep track of which piece of equipment is which. Izzy took a close-up shot of the serial number. Click. Oh, I almost forgot, she said. Thank you for bringing my camera back. Of course, Professor Henry smiled. I found it while I was cleaning up my drone that crashed. Izzy turned to me. That explains the metal pieces we saw in his garage. Mystery solved, she said. She slapped me. Five. As happy as I was that we had gotten our story, I couldn't help but feel sad. We had missed Pop-Pop's party. We never even gave him our special present. Just then, a new set of lights, light beams shined on us. I shied my eyes. I shielded my eyes. Chapter 15. Bird's Eye View. This time, the bright lights weren't coming from above. They were coming from the gravel path. Car doors swung open. Dad, Mom, Georgie, Juliet, Mimi, and Pop-Pop piled out. Boy, are we glad to see you guys, I said. Izzy and I quickly explained how the mysterious UFOs were actually Professor Henry's weather balloon drones. Professor Henry nodded. Dad smiled. Nice job, he said. Great investigative reporting, Mom added. Pop-Pop held out two slices of cake. You didn't think I would forget to save my sweet tooth granddaughter's birthday cake, did you? Izzy and I smiled. Then Izzy handed him our gift. Happy birthday, Pop-Pop, we both said. He ripped off the paper. The Pop-Pop Post, he said, reading the front page. Izzy and I made you a special newspaper full of stories and pictures of our favorite memories together, I explained. This is the best gift ever, Pop-Pop said, smiling. Izzy and I dug into the cake. Then we posted our news story online. Better late than never. Professor Henry walked over. Would you girls like to fly my drone, he shouted. He asked. Yes, we shouted. Izzy picked up the remote control. The drone lifted into the air. It's like driving a remote control car, but in the air, she said. A screen on the remote was connected to a camera on the drone. Gave us a bird's eye view of Selins Grove. Cool, I said. Professor Henry pointed to the numbers on the screen. This number shows how fast the wind is blowing, and this one shows the temperature. Izzy pushed a button. The drone flew higher and higher. The numbers are going crazy, said Izzy. The wind is pushing the drone all around. I'm losing control. Professor Henry took the remote. When he looked at the screen, his eyes nearly bulged out of his head. Oh my, he cried. Sorry, girls, but I have to go. Professor Henry ran off. I wonder what that was about, said Izzy. I don't know, but it sure seems like his drone saw something big, I replied. The people of Salins Grove count on the Orange Street News to get the facts, so let's go get them. I pulled out my notepad. So here is the story that they posted online to their online news site in 
the finished news format. So the headline is Exclusive UFO Mystery Solved by Hildy Kate Lisiak. The mysterious light in the sky that many Sellings Grove residents thought was a spaceship turned out to be a weather balloon drone. Residents saw the first bright light streak across the sky above Grove Pond at 3.40 p.m. The mystery deepened after metal pieces were found on a nearby hillside. Many residents thought the unidentified flying object was an alien spaceship. However, an Orange Street News investigation revealed that the UFOs were actually weather balloon drones that belonged to Professor Henry of Sellins Grove University. Oh geez, I heard people talking about aliens, but I had no idea they were talking about my drones, Professor Henry told the Orange Street News. Professor Henry uses information from these drones to learn more about the weather. I'm doing a study on the environment, Professor Henry told the Orange Street News. Hopefully the data this drone collects will help people better predict when the next storm might come. And that's the end. So um, I will post a little activity for you guys to go with this story. I hope you really enjoyed it. I love uh, reading about UFOs. So of course I had to read this book and I also love Hildy. So, um, I hope you guys love this story as much as I did, uh, whether you listen to it all at once or whether you listen to it over the course of a few days and Annie says bye and I say bye too. Have a great day.